Welcome to another video and possibly the last video here at this house. Guys, I have moved out. I have, I'm already moved out. But today in this big box, we have bucket seats going in the Forester. And we also have some other car parts. I even have some chairs that I ordered for the new apartment in here. We are packed full of stuff. I haven't even tried. Let's see if this will shut with that box in there. All right. We are good guys. We are going to head over to my new apartment with all this stuff. First of all, we'll give you guys a tour of the garage that we have set up in there. And so then we don't have to work in the hot sun or cold out in the driveway anymore. It's actually a really pretty drive on the way there. And we're gonna hopefully get those bucket seats in in this video because I don't know if I have all the hardware and it's it's a long story. I'll explain it once we get there. Start it for you guys. Cause I know you guys like that. Alright, let's go. I should probably roll these two windows up so this box right here doesn't go flying. I think that better. I think I think this will be a little safer there. We'll keep these two down because the Forester still doesn't have AC. I still need the new AC condenser. I have actually yeah, I have the hose down here. Yeah, this is one of the AC hoses underneath my seat. I have all the AC hoses for the AC, but the condenser on the STI engine is different, has different plugs than the Forester, but luckily if I buy a Forester AC condenser, it actually bolts onto the placements on the STI. Lock still like normal, and then it just has the right side plugs that uh, fit the stock Forester AC lines that I have, and then we'll just have to get a charge, but that'll be another video when I find the money to do that. But bucket seat time, because that's more important than AC in 80 degree weather. <laughs> Not bad, right? Decent size room for a single car garage. Got the Audi right there. New home. Anyone watching that might know where this is, just keep it to yourself. Well, I think it's time to show you guys what these look like. Let's see if I can. Uh... Oh, we lost the, We lost one of them in the car. Okay, yeah, so uh, these look a lot like Braum or Corbo seats. However, fun fact, all these style seats that you see sold by Braum and Corbo are eBay seats that are just restitched with a Braum or a Corbo logo. So you can get the eBay seats that don't have their logo, even though it doesn't have a logo, it has a different logo. This one's G-Rocker, I guess, and literally the exact same seat. And it's less than half the price. So yeah, we got that seat. The other seat is in here. They come with seat rails, which are in this box. And then I got seat brackets right there. We just gotta put it all together, take the stock seats out and put these ones in. Hopefully, I think the biggest issue is gonna be 
getting the seat bracket, seat rails, seat rails to fit on these the right way. I might have to drill extra holes or whatever because I had to mismatch parts, but we'll make it work. All right, that is one done with the sliders and everything on. Now we got to figure out how to get the um, bracket on, the seat bracket. We also got to figure out which driver's side, which patch. So we'll figure this out in a second. All right, this one right here is going to be the driver's side. You can tell because seat belt bracket on this side and the side mount on this side for the trans tunnel where the seat mount, seat bracket mounts on the side of the trans tunnel. So you got trans tunnel here, driver's side, passenger side. So this will be driver's side. We also gotta make sure we put it on the right way. So I'm gonna need two hands for this, it's kinda heavy. So it looks like these brackets should fit up. The only issue is these back holes don't really line up, but I'm sure we can make something work, either oval this out a little bit or maybe move the whole thing forward a tad or back a tad and drill a new hole right there. But this is going to work. Just gotta find hardware to use for the brackets now. <laughs> Which, good thing I grabbed my bolts bucket from my house. So now I can uh, go through this and find something. Alright, so we have both seats set up now with the brackets on them ready to go. Now all we gotta do is take the stock seats out and throw the buckets in. Also gotta get that box out of that seat. Also this will be, that mess will be for another video that I uh, started doing. Anyways, yeah, seats go in now. We also have to swap over the, uh, the seat belt things. So we'll do that when the seats are out of the car. Well, we got the seats in and my friend just texted me and told me that he blew a coolant line right by my place. So we're gonna take the Forester and test out the seats. They look freaking awesome. They look killer. I'm so stoked that the tan doesn't match as well as I thought it would, but it is what it is. All right, we'll get going. I guess my blinker's on. Let's go. First impression, I am absolutely in love. The seat bolsters are like awesome. I am in love with them. And you sit a lot lower, which I really enjoy. Sorry for the diesel right here, but I'd say 10 out of 10 purchase right here. I like it. All righty, we've got the coolant. Should be uh, pulling up on them here any second. Says he's somewhere over here. We'll find him somehow. Is he in there? There he is. Past him. Oh, flip a Yui. Oh, RIP 500 horsepower RS. <laughs> All right, so we don't 100% know what's going on. It's puffing a lot of smoke. We think, oh, dude, I got no clue. We got no clue what's going on. Somehow, 
Oh, it just smells like coolant. Is that a head gasket? It literally just reeks of coolant behind him. Hope he didn't blow a head gasket. There's no way, that thing's so built. It shouldn't blow a head gasket. Oh, there's my exhaust on the ground. That's all I smell. Oh, I hate that smell. Let's see, it's kind of see. It's not as thick as it was before. It was really thick in the parking lot. I guess we'll see what happens. Oh boy, we're pulling over. Oh boy. Oh my gosh. So we just pulled over. He came and told me that he's got a cylinder three misfire, which most likely means head gasket in my brain. The fact that I'm smelling coolant, white smoke out of the exhaust, cylinder three misfire, probably cracked a head gasket and it's leaking coolant into cylinder three, causing it to misfire. Ah, oh, dude, I feel so bad. He spent so much money to get this motor bill and he spent so much time doing this motor. I mean, he was only making like 520, 530 wheel and the motor's built for like six or 700. Ah, uh, just bad luck. Probably get a lot of smoke from this. Yeah, look at that. Oh my gosh. That is a ton. It's so weird for this to happen too. Like he's got like thousands of mile on this engine. Like it's not a new engine by any means. Like it's broken in, it's proven, driven, he daily drives it. He's really easy on the car. It's very weird that this just happened. I guess it's just happens. Okay, I just wanted to say, I think I understated how overbuilt that car is. He got it to a house, so we think it's a head gasket most likely. But I just want to say, I think I understated on how overbuilt that freaking car is. It's got, it's sleeved for a thousand horsepower. Head studs and head gasket are rated for a thousand horsepower. It's built for like 650, 700 wheel, and he's only pushing just over 500. Like the car is so overbuilt. It's just really weird that this would happen. It could have just been a perfect storm of things happening while he was driving, um, but we don't know. So yeah, that's what we're gonna leave off. Well, I didn't film an outro, so that's where we're gonna leave this video. It's dark, but seats are in. Tried to help my buddy Braden. And we're going to call that good. Thanks, guys. Peace.